you. Hello. I think everyone's here, hey? Hello. You say one to Check out the family. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Gotta be careful of some of these little mischievous goats. He can get I can see you. <laughs> All right, here we are, Greener Pastures Animal Sanctuary. We, we're here to meet the animals. Hey, mate. <laughs> he sort of nips you when he bites your clothes, eh? Hey? <laughs> That's my new mate. Have a look at this chicken, it's the coolest chicken I've ever seen. He's a rooster. Yeah, yeah. So there's another one in there. I have to let them out on alternate days because they but can fight. They fight each other. Roosters. Boys will be boys. Yep, exactly right. They never behave. So this is Rachel and you are the... I'm the owner and founder of Greener Pastures Sanctuary. Wow. How many animals do you have here? Uh, we have about 130 now. Wow. Lots of work? A lot, yes. More than full time. More than full time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and what, what do we have in here? Uh, so we're just going to go see the foxes. We've got two rescued foxes who are found as orphans um, and we built them an enclosure and yeah, we keep them in here and look after them and give them lots of love. Let's meet them. She does walk on a harness but if she gets away Hello. it freaks me out a bit because people bait and shoot around here. Like my watch. Be careful. Watch your purse. Get your vegan jerky. Here. Go on. Here. It's vegan, Fergs. <laughs> vegan jerky. Uh, Yum. I love all animals, but something about pigs, they just make me warm and fuzzy. Hey, Jimmy. We love the belly. Hey, Jimmy. You want a belly rub? You want a belly rub? Jimmy? <laughs> oh, you've been laying in the mud. Oh, that's... <laughs> Here you go. That's your spot? Is that your spot? It's all sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> I need a shower afterwards. <laughs> Getting all muddy. Uh, so Jimmy was found um, next to his dead mum. His mum had been shot, uh, found in a national park. They do catch them and they shift them to different areas yeah. so they can shoot them. It's for fun, basically. For fun. Yeah. Oh, well, luckily Jimmy had a, had a good outcome, yeah? Definitely, yeah. He is one lucky pig. Yeah. Okay, so who have we got next? Wombat. Come here, Wombat. <laughs> she jumped out of a transport truck and landed on her, on her head, on her face. But she tried to save herself and it worked. How lucky is Wombat? So we put these beautiful animals in a position where they have to try to escape and jump out of trucks. And now look. Now look at Wombat. Second chance. Beautiful mud pool. It looks really cool in there. Maybe I might hop in with her. Like a spa bath. Oh, <laughs> like that. Oh. On second thoughts, maybe I'll give it a miss. <laughs> You're a beautiful girl. Oh, she's going down. She's going down. Oh, she's going down. Is this your favorite? Is this your favorite? Oh, you've got a lot of belly to rub. Look at your fish. Look at that fish. Oh, it's so beautiful. Everyone come give a belly rub for her. <laughs> I should be a pig massage therapist. You're a beautiful girl, aren't you? Jimmy, are you getting belly scratches? Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, wait a second, aren't you Jimmy too? Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah, do you want to scratch my belly as yeah, well? Yeah, give Jimmy a belly scratch. Yeah. Who's nice this, Eve? They, you've got the same colour hair. <laughs> we know. Similar. He um, was too noisy for suburbia. Oh. So people get them and they don't factor in that they're going to be crowing, not just in the morning, but all hours. Why did you call him Tiny? Um, because he's huge. I thought it'd be ironic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tiny. Yeah, but huge in attitude. Little bird, big attitude. Yeah. He means business. Don't mess with him. So all these individual animals are so unique in their personalities and they all have a different story. So let's go see some more. Blossom's a mini pig. Look how mini she is. They go from between 80 and 150 kilos. And the problem with people getting mini pigs is they think they're going to be these tiny little pigs and then they grow up and then they get rid of them, hey? I think this poo is indicative of the animals that are in here. Looks like horse. These horses, a lot of them rescued from horse racing. Yeah, a lot of them are from racing and yeah. some competition horses as well. So their fate, um, if you don't rescue them... Yeah. Was a bullet. A every, bullet? Yeah, every one of them was safe from a bullet. Wow. We've got the Melbourne Cup coming up in Australia. It's probably one of the biggest horse races in Australia. Yeah, there's no retirement plan for race horses. Yeah. So people ask me, is horse racing cruel? Well, they all get killed. They all go to the knackery. They all get shot in the head and they all end up either as dog food or sold off as yep. some exotic meat. Yep, exactly right, yeah. Hello. Oh wow. 
Oh, this one's really friendly. There's another one over here. Look at your beautiful face. Oh, she keeps giving me a pat. Oh, God. <laughs> giving me a pat. I've just realised something. Jimmy that we were talking to before, Jimmy the pig, is named after James Aspie. How's that? That's why he's so good looking. They're all coming in for the pats. This is Pip. She likes to smell my hair. Mm. Oh, Ollie. Ollie. <laughs> What's that all about, mate? Now, I didn't think this was possible, but I'm pretty sure the pig Jimmy is even better looking than the real James. Wow. See, horses are always branded. Oh, this is a fire brand, hurts more. So branding horses is a way of identifying them as their properties. And animals can't be anyone's property. They exist for their own rights. Well, who's this coming over to us? This is Baloo. Baloo? Yeah. Hello, Baloo. Baloo. Baloo is a bobby calf. A bobby calf. He was rescued from a dairy down south. Um, he was 24 hours old when we got him. Him and his brothers, they were in a bad way. The industry standard now is they only have to be fed once every 24 hours. Yeah. So they end up really dehydrated and sick. They either kill them on their first day of life or they let them, they yes. sometimes grow them for veal, yeah? Yeah, so if they've got enough to warrant putting them on a truck to go to the slaughterhouse, they will, but there was only the three of these guys. So he was just gonna shoot them on sight. Oh, you like the taste of my um, <laughs> microphone. So this is the reality of drinking milk, eating cheese. These ones here, this is a happy story. They're rescued and they get to live out their lives on this farm, but majority of uh, bobby calves and all cow all cows in the dairy industry are all sent to the beef industry, they're all killed, so. When you're in the cow field, watch out for the uh, surprises. This one means business, eh? A beautiful girl, look how, look at those beautiful horns. So this property here was a beef farm. Okay. Um, the farmer was retiring and there was a few cows left behind okay. that had um, not been sent off to the slaughterhouse yet. So Aww. we managed to rescue them and one of them was heavily pregnant and a month after we moved in she gave birth to a calf. And yeah. what was her fate to go to the abattoir? Yep, to the abattoir, heavily pregnant and um, so she's got her baby now and it's the first baby she's ever been wow. allowed to keep. Yeah. What a story. So she was going to get killed with a baby in her stomach but they both survived. Thousands and thousands of cows are killed with uh, while still pregnant. I guess when, when you see cows inside like a dairy or a, or a farm, they're a little bit more timid because they've just haven't been, you know, treated the best. But even just naturally, they're just peaceful animals, you know. And we herd them into these, you know, abattoirs and kill them, which is so morally wrong. My, if you could see the size of this one, this is Harry. Harry just looks like is it, a very good looking man. So big too, so big. Like he's this tall. Are you sure? He doesn't like pats. Harry doesn't, doesn't really like pats, but. Beautiful, big, majestic, gentle beings. When I see cows in a slaughterhouse truck about to be slaughtered or in a dairy farm or in capti captivity tied up, they always have these tears running down their eyes. And I was just asking Rachel if they, if she sees her car, uh, cows tearing out their eyes. No, I've never noticed it. I personally think they're crying because they're expressing emotion and tears are, you know, a natural part of expressing emotion for us. Like, so I think cows act in a similar way. You could definitely do more research into it, but I would say that that could be true. They have emotions just like us, so. <laughs> I got a kiss. Can I have another one? What's your horns? I might get the kiss of um, death from the horn. <laughs> it just feels really good to see cows like actually happy and I think it's what I needed to come down here to the sanctuary after you know witnessing four cows being s slaughtered in front of my face. I think this is just what I needed um, to see that there is some light um, through all of this and these cows will get to live out their life and so many more people are going vegan every single day, getting messages, people going vegan, and the movement is growing, and you know, hopefully this suffering can end one day. What's she doing? Someone likes your bum bum. Oh, oh, you like the camera strap. I'm gonna come home smelling like pigs, like cows, like all of the animals. See, these bobby calves have still got their horns. Just have to be a little bit careful of them. But usually they get them lopped off with like these big cutting tools and they don't use anaesthetic or anything, it's horrible to see. And they burn them. They burn them off too, yeah. If you're still eating cows, I'd invite you to come down to a sanctuary and, and spend some time with them. You can really feel, you look them in the eyes, you can see they're just like big puppy dogs, you know, like, they are not food. Cows are not food. Who's your special boy? What's going on here? I uh, caught you. Are camera shy? 
You camera shy? Oh, wow. Your tongue is really rough, but it feels kind of good. Don't be jealous, mate. There's plenty of kisses for you too. Come kiss. Oh, my last video was just me kissing animals and I kind of got, people said, you better be careful, man. That might get hurt or catch something. I was like, I don't care, it's worth it. Here they come. Stampede! <laughs> you have to be careful of daffodils, she'll horn you. You've got bruises on your arm. <laughs> you a bit hungry. Have you come up to say hello, have you? Hey? Okay, this is Christoph. How you going, Christoph? Very good, Joey. Um, he was rescued locally, actually. He was going to be someone's Christmas dinner. Wow. His name was Christmas. Oh, my God. Um, luckily, the niece in the family is vegan, and she went and nabbed him and brought him down to us. That's weird, Christoph. You don't look like food. You look like a sentient animal. That's because I am one. In insight from Christoph. These are the most amazing animals when you look at them. Over here, the skin changes colour depending on his mood. So he'll wow. go whitish blue when he's excited and then bright red if he's angry. Wow, he wears his emotions on the outside. He does. We know how he feels. <laughs> Christoph, you're beautiful. See, look, now he's blushing. Showing off for the ladies. Very handsome. Why don't people want roosters? They're too noisy for suburbia and also they're hard to keep um, in groups because they fight. So they're harder to, harder to love roosters but they need it the most. <laughs> One pig amongst about 50 roosters. Yep. Looks after them. She looks after them. And takes care of their leftover food. And takes care of them. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, someone's the king of Nelly now. Nelly's get a belly rub. So Nelly's another mini pig. No. Okay, so who's this? This is Sam, um, and he was rescued from a place where he was going to be um, sorted for food. Mm -hmm. And he was found in the pen as a newborn piglet, um, bound with electrical tape. So his front legs, back legs were bound up. So he could, literally couldn't get up to feed from his mum. So he right. would have laid there and died a slow death. Right. A, a major supermarket chain would have bought them, hey? Yep. All for a bacon sandwich. This poor little innocent, you know, piglet tied up for no reason. And look at him now. <laughs> Loving it. We, can, we should call him Second Chance Sam. <laughs> okay, so we've come to the end of the day and first of all, I want to say thank you for all your hard work. It's not easy running a sanctuary with so many animals in there. And these things don't run themselves. They, they can be very expensive to run. Can you talk through some of the costs maybe? Yeah, so our biggest expense is probably vet bills. Yeah. Um, we're at about three and a half to four grand a month wow. just in vet bills. Wow. And then you've got feed bills, maintenance bills, um, general care of the animals. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty pricey. Sorry, we woke you up, didn't we? And also maybe even expanding and taking on more animals is gonna cost even more money, yeah? Yeah, so we're at that point now where we have animals waiting to come, but we literally have nowhere to put them. Okay. Ah, really? These are very interesting conversations. So what can people do to help? Um, we've got a campaign at the moment called Growing Greener Pastures. Okay. Um, and you can find that on our Facebook page and on our website. And also donating to us or wow. sponsor an animal. Um, all wow. of that helps, yep. So I'm gonna leave all the links down below where you can help these animals. And if you feel like you, you, know, you wanna help or do contribute to real animals, real live beings here that on this uh, sanctuary, then click the links down below and support it. Support this sanctuary. Thank you very much.